can we just talk about for a second how she's 15 and she just got her first penthouse apartment by herself and I'm t nearly 28 and just getting ready to move out of my parents house <sighs> rich bitch <laughs> Hello fellow book nerds and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm super excited because I'm talking about the series that was one of the main driving forces for starting this channel because I so badly had to talk about it with people and that is Lucia Franco's Off Balance series, Balance and Execution. It'd be really funny if I had them mixed up but I think this is Balance and Execution. Yep, no, nope, I'm right. So this series is on Kindle Unlimited and like normal, I will link both of them in the bottom bar. So I will just come right out and warn you, if you have not read it, this has a big trigger and you either like this or you don't, and that's age gap slash forbidden. Because this is a huge age gap, probably the biggest one I've read, and it involves a 15 year old girl and a 32 year old man. And they do have sexual relations when she's 16. So you either like those or you don't. If you don't, if you, you know, it's not something you're really into, you don't like reading that, I would honestly stay away from the series. But if you love them or you're borderline with them, I beg you to give, I beg you to give it a try. Trust me, this book will, or the series, I should say, will captivate you like nothing you have ever read. Biggest, biggest book hangover I've ever had in my life. Even like while reading it, which is there a word for book hangover, but while you're reading it? Is that technically book drunk? Because to get the hangover, you gotta get drunk first. So you'll get book drunk and book hungover while reading this. So this series is about Adriana, who's 15 years old and an aspiring gymnast who's trying to compete and going to the Olympics. And she lives on the East Coast of Florida and gets her family's permission to move to the West side of Far Florida, Florida, Florida and train at one of her father's friend's gyms. And there is where she meets her coach, Coach Kova, who's 32 years old and a former Olympian. So we don't know much about Kova other than he's 32, a former Olympian, now coaches gymnastics, and he's in a long-term relationship with his girlfriend Katya. So there is cheating in this series, another trigger I should put out there. It's cheating obviously because he's in a relationship and Adrian is 15, so they're the ones doing the cheating. I know that's a make or break for some people, but put warning you on that one too. It's really hard for me to say too much without giving away spoilers, which I will do at the end of the video. But basically Adriana is training to be in the Olympics. So this whole book is her gymnastics career and her life and what it just takes and what you have to push through and mentally, physically, emotionally to be an elite level gymnast, which I'll just say I could not do. And this book really gives you an in-depth detail look at how, what these girls go through and at such a young age. So you get an in-depth view, view of the world of gymnastics and training for it and obviously then the main story is her and Kova's relationship. So all I'll say is definitely give this a chance. If you want to listen to the spoilers, go for it. It's your choice, but I highly recommend you read it and then come back and skip to the end and rewatch my spoilers because it will take some steam out of the relationship they go through if you hear some of the spoilers because a lot happens especially in the second book execution or if you've already read it or you really do just want to know spoilers before you read it stay here and if you have not read it and you do not like spoilers now's the time to get out because this is i'm going into detail spoilers so bye bye get out okay so i'm going right into it and if you see my eyes averting to the side it's because i have a whole thing of notes because i did not want to miss any facts going through all this. I have quotes written down. We're going full blown, like detailed spoiler discussion right now. Let's just get right into this. So why did Kova get married? That's the big question we have after reading Execution going into the new book release. Okay, so one, it's obviously, it's not love. Like you don't, you don't cheat on someone that much if you really love them. So this was not a true love marriage. I think we all can agree on that one. Two, you don't drink yourself into a stupor the week you get married. Again, if you're, <laughs> if you're marrying the one you love, you should not need to drink yourself to death. And three, he says in execution at the very end of it, the night before Adriana finds out that he's married, he specifically says, what, what do you do if your back is in a corner and you have to make a choice? 
clearly he was talking about his wedding without actually saying it to her. So why would you say that, if, again, if you're marrying someone you quote-unquote love? Now that says true love to me. So let's break down what I think here. There's either blackmail, which if it's blackmail, is it coming from Katya? From what little we know of her, which is funny how much hate she has. I see online people can't stand her. I mean, I don't like her either, but we she's literally, I think, in been like three scenes. We know nothing about her and she has not shown any like rude or bitchiness. She's literally just existed. Like if she was any other character, had no relation to Kova, people would be like, eh, don't mind her. But people like hate her just for the fact of like what she is and who she represents and things like that but um is it blackmail by Katya if she's doing blackmail on him I think it's there was a quote in balance she said something I wrote it down she said to him that in that scene where him and Adriana like first kiss in the gym like late at night when she like sneaks in and watches him ex like work out and then Katya shows up she says to Kova this is not what we agreed to. My time is running out. So that's indicating, I mean, she doesn't work. She's not a US citizen, like she, they're from Russia. So obviously it's her green card, I'm assuming. Like she doesn't, she can't be in America that long without being married or working. So I'm assuming that's what she means by time running out. And then this is not what we agreed to. Does she mean they had an agreement on a wedding? They had an agreement not to send her back to Russia, that can mean a few things, which she could be using against him. Like, hey, you promised me we either get married or we go back to Russia, or you promised you wouldn't send me to back to Russia. Like, I don't have to go back there. And that's like why he had to do the wedding. You know, like his back was against a wall. He made her a promise. Because Lucia keeps advertising the saying, he made a vow that can't be broken. And everyone's assuming, you know, wedding vow. I think it's ultimately a, he made her a promise either to not send her back to Russia or to marry her. And he's ultimately feeling guilty and fulfilling that. I even think maybe it's a little bit, maybe something with his mom, because they, her, his mom had to have known Katya and his mom meant everything to him. And I'm thinking maybe he promised his mom he would marry her. And because she meant so much to him, he's so blinded by that promise, maybe the history he has with Katya and like that devotion that he's used to with her. So maybe like he's kind of blinded by that because I think it's pretty obvious he's not in love with her anymore. He loves her, probably cares about her still because it's a lifelong relationship. You don't just drop that. But I think he might be blinded by the vow slash promise and maybe something to do with his mother. If Kova could choose, would he actually keep Katya around, like, or be in a relationship with her? Like, if all the other barriers dropped, would he stay in a relationship with her? Or is he honestly kind of still an asshole and he does care for her and he wants Rhea too and he's trying to have his cake and eat it too? Because that's the whole thing of Kova that's so frustrating and like, I love that Lucia wrote it this way because it drives us crazy because we don't get any points of view of Kova. So we know absolutely nothing of what he thinks and he shares absolutely nothing. So that's the one thing I'm hoping for to read and release, but we don't know how he really truly feels about Katya. I think we all have a good grasp of how he does feel about Rhea, but we want to hear him say it here, like just get it out. If he really, again, if he really, really loved her, why did he take so long to marry her? What was keeping him back then? And then Adriana came and that came and that just threw a wrench into the entire thing for them. But what prior, what was holding him off? And he shows signs that he does really care about Katya, like that maybe he is still in love. Like in execution, that scene at Adriana's uh, New Year's party up on her balcony, and they're talking and he's, she's trying to get him to open up and he's opening up about how Katya is like distant and it would kill him if she like didn't want to be with him anymore and he feels like he's losing her and he's genuinely upset about all that. And it's like, if you didn't love her or be in love with her, why would that matter to you? And you're telling, saying it to the girl who you're ultimately falling for too, which God bless Adriana because I could not handle hearing that if I was in her position. But like he contradicts himself through the entire series. Kova is a walking, talking contradiction. 
who doesn't know how to use contractions and who refuses to use contraceptive. I just, I don't get him and I need in relation and to be more clear. I just need to know where he stands, stop saying one thing and doing the other, whether it's about Adriana or about Katya. Let's get a clear path here, buddy. It's book three, get your shit together. <laughs> The other thing that throws a wrench into all this is Joy, Adriana's mother. And what does she know? And what role does she play in anything, if any? I think Joy, Adriana's mother, is the reason that that article came out with the photos. Because there are some photos that they say they're taken from the bushes outside of Adriana's apartment complex. I think Joy, after she found Kova's jacket, after the New Year's party on Adriana's balcony, I think she got suspicious and she started follow, having a camera crew or a paparazzi, because they are a prominent family, follow Adriana. And when she noticed Kova and Adriana together outside of the gym, maybe she started following around Kova too, or took that photographer off Adriana and moved it to Kova. But either way, that's how her mother knew about the engagement. But the thing that doesn't make sense in the scene where Adriana finds out Joy is not her birth mother. Joy makes the comment about how Katya is Kova's fiance, not wife, but she was his wife at that point. So that means she's not up to date because she Joy would have said in the moment, would have said wife if she knew. So she probably, she did not know. So how did she get half the information and not the full information? Didn't you know why? Again, it also comes into play as Adriana's father who either is having, has had, or was a one-time deal, something with Katya, because Joy showed distaste for Katya that was more than just jealous of her looks. So Joy was not doing anything in, the, in helping Katya. Her actions were all to either hurt Adriana or to hurt Adriana's father or hurt both, probably both. The last prominent thing is what's wrong with Adriana because we know the doctor calls her, says there's something we need to talk to you about. And what is it? I'm just, I don't believe for a second it's pregnancy, not at all. Because it would, it would ultimately ruin the entire series because a gymnast can't have a baby. Her body would not be able to bounce back. And this series, when it comes down to it, is about Adriana's gymnastics career. And I don't think she would do the abortion thing because we have the Avery storyline that did the abortion and what, like, you wouldn't repeat the same storyline with two characters in the same series, you know? But the pregnancy wouldn't make sense. I don't even think, I think cancer would be too serious, you know? Because again, it has to be something that she can hide and still do gymnastics. Like an STD or something for all the B12 shots or all the Motrin or um, all the Plan B. I'd be interested to see what that is and how much that affects going forward in the story. So what I want to see with release coming out in six days, finally, is one, I want to know why Kova got married. I would expect we would find out, we probably, I want to know why he got married, him to start opening up his feelings a little bit more, stop being a contradiction, start making like some decisions here, choose a side a little more clearly. And what the heck is wrong with Rhea? What happens with her, her and Hayden, poor Hayden. You know, the poor guy, I want to be Team Hayden so badly, but my taboo heart is like, nope, Kova. Like at the end of the series, I wanted to be her and Kova. So that is it for this video. Thank you all for watching. My foot is asleep and it's actually very painful. I can't even stand up to end this video right now. Happy reading and I'll see you guys next time on my next video. Bye.